Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and in this video I'm going to be introducing you to the parametric EQ. The parametric equalizer is a powerful tool for mixing, and while there are other types of equalizers out there, the parametric EQ is so common and so powerful in mixing that I will only be covering it and using it in this tutorial. An equalizer, or an EQ, is an effect that allows you to adjust the levels of various frequency ranges in your sounds. You can increase, often called boosting, decrease, often called cutting, or even completely remove, often called filtering out or filtering off, certain frequency ranges, which we often refer to as frequency bands. A parametric EQ will allow you to determine the parameters of gain or level, center frequency, often called just frequency, and bandwidth, or Q, for the various bands on your equalizer. The number of bands will vary between different EQ plugins, and some will even allow you more options for the bands, such as enabling or disabling them, and selecting a filter type. It will definitely be a good idea to read the manual for the specific EQ plugin you will be using to make sure that you know all the different options available in your EQ plugin. And for the most part, you know, how a parametric EQ works is pretty universal, so a lot of the information I show you in this video using the Fruity Parametric EQ2 as an example will transfer to your specific EQ. The only difference is your specific EQ may have more options or less options in certain areas. So in the Fruity Parametric EQ 2, you can see that I have seven different tokens here. And each token represents its own frequency band. And so I can use each of these tokens to, you know, boost, or cut certain frequencies by adjusting the level or the gain of that band. And I can change which frequencies the band affects by adjusting the frequency knob, which will adjust that center frequency. And I can have it affect more or less frequencies around that center frequency by adjusting the bandwidth knob here, which is sometimes labeled as Q. I would like to mention at this point that I'm only going to be touching on some of the main capabilities of the Fruity Parametric EQ2, and basically the capabilities that will most likely transfer between other EQs. If you want a very in-depth look at specifically the Fruity Parametric EQ2 to get a very detailed idea about how all of the different options and functions work, um, I will have a link in the description of this video where you can go check that out. And you know, you could also always read the manual as well. So each of these tokens is a band, and each of these bands is a filter. The most common filter types on parametric equalizers are a peaking filter, and it may be referred to by another name, um, depending on who you talk to or what manual you read, but essentially, you know, it will increase or decrease a specific set of frequencies around a center frequency. And a high shelf filter, which will boost or reduce anything above a certain frequency. and a low shelf filter, which will boost or reduce anything below a certain frequency. Mm -hmm. 
And you can see that for both the high shelf and the low shelf, that they have a curve and then they plateau at a certain level. And you, know, you can adjust the steepness of that curve by changing the bandwidth or Q knob. And yeah. So those three are the most common filter types you will have on a parametric EQ. You know, even the most basic parametric EQ will probably have at least one of each of those. But a lot of EQs will also have more filter options than just those. So the next two most popular are going to be high pass and low pass. And they're kind of similar to high shelf and low shelf, except where high shelf and low shelf allow you to boost or cut anything above or below a certain frequency, high pass and low pass filters will only cut the frequencies below or above a certain frequency. And instead of plateauing at a certain level, they will continue to reduce the frequencies until, at some point, the frequency level has gone completely to zero. So you can see this if I put on a low pass filter. You know, it just removes everything above a certain frequency. And if you want to remember the name of that filter, and specifically how it works, you can just think low pass allows the low frequencies to pass. So it's filtering out the highs and it's letting the lows pass. And again, the bandwidth knob will you know, change the steepness of that curve. And certain EQs will allow you to change that even more, which in the fruity parametric EQ is here. And yeah, you can set it to be even more steep and all that. And on a lot of different EQs, it will be labeled as a certain number of decibel reduction per octave. So it might say, you know, 2 dB per octave or 8 dB per octave. And that just decides how quickly your filter is reducing the different frequencies. So the low pass filter will filter out the frequencies above a set frequency and a high pass will filter out the frequencies below a set frequency. And then, you know, you have a bandwidth and an order option for that as well. So those five filters are the most common and there are a few other filter types that you may have with your EQ. And you may have even more than I explained in this video, so it would definitely be worth checking out the manual of your EQ to make sure you know exactly what your EQ offers. So the next filter type is a band pass filter. And if you remember the low pass and the high pass, you know, the low pass allowed the low frequencies to pass, the high pass allowed the high frequencies to pass, and the band pass allows the frequencies around a certain frequency band to pass. So, you know, everything above this frequency starts to get filtered out to zero, and everything below it starts to get filtered out to zero. But at this particular frequency, the sound is allowed through. And again, you know, you have the bandwidth option along with the order option. And whatever other options that your EQ might offer. And the last type of filter I will be showing you in this video, because it's the last type of filter that the Fruity Parametric EQ offers, is the band stop or notch filter. And you can pretty much think of this as being the opposite of a band pass filter. You know, instead of allowing the frequencies around the band through the sound while filtering everything else out, it filters only the frequencies around that band out. And it does filter them all the way to zero. And again, you know, you can adjust the bandwidth and the order of that as well.
So that's all I will be covering in this video. Hopefully it was helpful. You know, hopefully you just have an idea of how the parametric EQ works a little bit better. And, you know, if you really want to get familiar with using an EQ, all it takes is a little bit of practice playing around with the different parameters and all that. But for specific techniques and stuff, um, using EQ to get the best frequency balance and to help prevent sounds from clashing in your mix, definitely continue to watch through the rest of this section of the tutorial because I will be introducing you to some specific techniques and tips that will really help you get the best results from your use of the EQ.